The Doug Anthony All-Stars, Australia's iconic bad boy comedy cabaret trio of the late 80s and 90s, are back in town. Reuniting for two shows this weekend in Melbourne's Comedy Festival. If you look closely at this, though, Jesus rocks the Kremlin, baby commies. you'll notice two big differences. This man is in a wheelchair with MS. We picked up a fan on the street as well. And this man was once this man. Oh, you couldn't scratch yourself. Who has replaced this man. I am just a poor boy, oh, my story seldom told. Who is now this man and very busy with a real job. That's fantastic, guys. Thank you. That's lovely. Help! The man in the red jacket is the same. I don't know this guy. Help! So how's it going to work? Well, we've got to put the brakes on first. <laughs> Otherwise, because we're on the incline. You get away from us if we're not careful. They started as buskers on the streets of Canberra, and now they're back on the streets to launch the festival. We've never done it with uh, Tim in the chair, though, and the last time we busked was probably, what, 20-odd years ago. Help! Stop. See, nothing happens. Oh, come on, this fella's in a goddamn chair, people. You guys what are we thinking about? about? <laughs> that way, please. But the new Doug Anthony All-Stars are all about their feelings. That's where he talks about it when he's on stage. You take him right to the edge of their mortality. Is that where he can only talk about it? Mm. Time is short and you've got to hurry. That's a big part of the show. We are temporary people, especially the people on stage. Look at the affection. Are you telling me that you're doing this for oh, him? I hate that. I hate that. Are you telling me? I, no, I wouldn't say that on camera. No, I get a lot out of it myself, you know, I enjoy it. I've always loved it, so... You've always loved him? Yeah. It's gone in and out, that, that relationship. Paul's got two switches. He's a uh, taciturn teetotaler who just sits there and says nothing. Or he's a raconteur who's absolutely charming and roguish. But I've never found the middle bit of Mr McDermott. Maybe there's no middle bit. He's solid gold. He just his job is to be gruff and nasty and short, which he does the third one very well. Stay with the man in the chair. Stay with the man in the chair. This is where it's happening. Come on, Tim, pick up the pace. Pick Mind up the pace. Fiora, I can walk. This pick is up. the real story of the Doug Anthony All Stars, circa 2016, coming to terms with life's fortunes. I don't think anything, you know, really prepares you for for the magnitude of it. You all right? You're in your yeah, fine. I'll be fine. Careful! <laughs> I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm still comfortable with it. It's. Uh, I, I find him incredibly. You know, he's 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 gracious and he's um, he's heroic in many ways. You probably hate me saying that. I think it's best to you know to try and just find the find the person again, uh, scrape away all the. Uh, you know, all the, all the bits and pieces that seem to be blocking your vision from just seeing that person. Come and join us. We're from Hillsong. We just want to... <laughs> a lot of people will say, mm, oh, well, ooh, be careful. Be careful saying that. And you can't say that these days. For Christ's sake, you just say it. You know, and if something comes back, will you just deny saying it? <laughs> just want to talk about the way the Lord has affected our lives and made our lives richer and better. I don't mind calling myself a spastic cripple because technically, as far as the dictionary is concerned, it's true. And hopefully, this will be the bus where he'll walk again. Yeah! <laughs> Laughing about something makes you higher than the thing. It puts you above whatever it is that's scaring you. I have got Krishna riding shotgun on the stagecoach of my life. And regrets, he's had a few. Back then, all I thought was, I can't walk on stage and limp like this. What if this stays? It's over. Whereas if I'd been smart, I just would have gotten in a wheelchair. He didn't tell me. I think Paul told me. I don't think Tim's ever told me. <laughs> so I assume it's the truth. Because I'm a man and I ignore it. It's like, look at Barnaby Joyce. You know, he wakes up in the morning and goes, no, I can't fix it, I'll shave it. But that's it, I'm stuck with it. The Dugs have sold out warm-up shows on their way to their gigs at Melbourne Town Hall this weekend. Oh, 
pensioner, a cripple, and a songwriter. A pensioner, a cripple, and a superstar. Ah, yet yeah, bridges will be burned. The old stars have returned. We are the day of the old stars. There's a point to all the humour that is, you know, dark and scary and sad. It's about loss. It's about powerlessness in the face of the, the biggest weapon there is, time. And that stuff, you know, that stuff's very interesting to us. Life's precious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it becomes more precious as you get older. It's not like we're some kind of rock band that's got together trying to kind of spinal tap our way into old glories. I mean, we, we admit that it doesn't quite work. And I think that's the magic. It's like playing with magic, like playing with alchemy. What if we did this to their heads? I think that's why suicide bombers always tend to be, you know, poor, stupid men between the ages of 15 and, and 22, you know. Get to a certain point, you just realise how, how precious and how fragile it is.